You should do something though, because uh, you know what I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I'm feeling a little awkward. No, make me feel more comfortable. Can you read me a bedtime story? <laughs> oh, hold on. Yeah, please. Hold like, on. <laughs> Keep everybody entertained for entertained for five <laughs> seconds as I find a bedtime story. <laughs> what? Is it? All right, I'm gonna walk you through what's happening. So I'm laying in my sleep shorts and my white t-shirt. I'm laying on my plastic like rolly chair thing. My feet are in the rolly chair. The mic is down by my face. I don't know why I fucking have a beer. I have a beer next to me. Wait, hold on. Are you drinking my beer? You son of a bitch. Well, whenever you need one, let me know and I'll pass you the one I'm drinking. Okay, so what do we want to do? We want to do adventure, animal, fairy tales. Oh, we, can we do a choose fun. your own adventure? Please. Well, no. Please. Not. Please. Stop kicking your feet like a Please, baby. Please, daddy. Pick one. It's not a choose your own adventure, but you, I will let you pick which one. No, but I want an adventure. I want to choose where I go. Do a choose your own adventure. Okay, let me find a choose your own adventure. Please. This is going to be cra- Welcome to the crash cast. See, Cyril, earlier tonight, I thought we were going to have a bunker cast. Yeah, it's I wanted to cr- crawl into the JC's bunker and prepare for the end of the world, but he wasn't hearing it. It was a fun idea, but now I'm like all in on the crash cast because I'm probably going to fall asleep in like five seconds. How do you spell adventure? How many J's are in adventure? Uh, None. How do you A-D-V-E-N-T-U-R-E. Hey, you know what you could do now that you're on the ground? You You could still crawl into the bunker. You could what? You could crawl into the bunker. And that would that would do it? I I don't know what that would do, but then you could call it a bunker cast. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, I mean, like, you know, not really. Okay. Choose your own adventure. Yes. Com. Five story games for new users. So okay, we're gonna go off this. Do you want to do snow, ground zero, eternal, the price of freedom? Freedom, freedom, innocence lost, or Ulysses the Pegasi incident. Any one of those is your choice. What is my choices? Snow, Ground Zero, Eternal, The Price of Freedom, Ulysses. Ulysses. Were you just asleep? I'm not going to say if I was or not. I think I had a dream, though. Hey, you can have this. You can have this. This is your gift. Oh, thank you. A full beer that you've drooled on. I haven't drooled. I haven't even. I've had one drink. I'm going to go. Ulysses. Okay. The Federation of the Worlds contains six different species. Home worlds. uh, With hundreds of colonies, space stations, and outposts. For over a hundred years, the six major species, those capable of interstellar travel, have lived in relative peace. The FSS Ulysses is a home starship for the Federation of Stellar Services, designed to carry out non-military roles such as scientific exploration, providing medical aid, and performing diplomatic duties. However... The crew has been called to the aid of the military branch of the Federal Stellar Services on numerous occasions in the past, and while not as heavily armed or armored as the military cruiser, her twin ship-scale particle cannons still pack quite a punch. So the story so far. A distress call was was received at Starbase 14 from Pegasi Station a mixed-species space station located on Sector 17. All the humans aboard Pegasi Station had fallen ill with a mysterious virus, and the starship Ulysses was quickly dispatched to examine the situation and hopefully to cure the disease before the humans are dead. God. This isn't going to work. Are you asleep yet? Pretty close, bro. Yeah, this isn't going to work because... As soon as I get done with these like next two paragraphs, it's how to read the game book. In this game book, 
Instead of playing a single character, you, you decide how numerous characters in the story will react. There's to no situations. like Mike Tyson's punch out. No, no, this is way too much reading for me right now. Why? Why for you? Why? Because I can't read. Thank you for calling me out. What the fuck are we doing right now? I'm you, fucking doing a crash cast. You want to wrap this up? No, I'm doing a crash cast. I'm not going to read you. I'm, I'm going to read you like a Hansel and Gretel bedtime story, not well, something we have to play on with fucking well, I interstellar species. I don't know what the species. fuck you're fucking talking about right now. Well, you told you're me to find you a goddamn fucking... Goddamn gobbledygook. You told me to I'm find you to a... I'm going to fuck to sleep. It's a fucking crash cast. What the fuck do you expect out of a crash cast? You told you me to find you... think I'm going to fucking you? wrap it up with you? I'm going to fall the fuck asleep on a crash cast. You want a fucking crash cast? Prost! <laughs> Salud! No! No! It's not over. All right, we're doing a fairy tale. Read me a bedtime story, Daddy. We're doing fairy tale. Scary. <laughs> All right, I'll let you pick. When the shadows come, the skull tree or the witch's messengers. I would like the witch's messengers. So this one has no interaction, and hopefully we don't have to explain an entire Starfleet's fucking structure. <laughs> the no. wind blowed. Don't listen to him as a Starfleet. The wind blowed in Maria's hair. It reminded her of the curse. She struggled on in the wind, almost knocking her over the edge. Thalia, she cried before stumbling on a pebble. Thalia! Maria was looking for her long lost daughter and a fortune teller had told her to seek her at the Bloodhurst Cave. Years of searching had made her desperate for help, and she would go to every petty fortune teller, every fake oracle, just to be given some hope and then be beaten down. This was her last chance. Suddenly, a distant Maria spotted a plume of red smoke. Thalia, she cried, and began to run. Oh, no. She stumbled again, and her knees began bleeding, but still Maria ran. When she got to the source, she found a hole, just large enough to walk into if she stooped. Maria checked her photo in the cave. What? Maria checked her photo of the cave. Spelling went to shit on that sentence. Yep, this seemed right. She ducked and stepped in gingerly, reaching out for a powerful darkness. She peered behind her. The cliff face, scurly ridge lay behind her. Maria shivered and carried on forward. Delia! She whispered loudly, silence. Maria bit her lip and began to run. Her knees hurt and she was tired. But Maria was important, or important, impatient. She kept bumping into the walls until she found what she was looking for. In a large room, deep inside a cave, on top of a ridge that was 10 miles high, traveling on foot and horse, donkey and carriage, she had made it. In the room, there was a witch. Lightning, blood, red candles, whilst chanting strange words, whilst chanting strange words. The witch didn't look up as Maria stepped into the pale light. Gay yes, asked the witch in a young voice. Beg me pardon, ma'am? I do not speak that language, Maria said. Uncertainly, the witch laughed in a high, brittle laugh. <laughs> of course you do not, child. Here is a potion that will make her wake. Are we here approved? The what? Hello? JC? What's up, dude? What'd you say? I said I'm pick the one. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick the one with the least popular fucking thing. Okay. Through there, she pointed behind her. Maria stepped into a tiny door, only just wide enough to let her through. In the room, there was a stone bed. On the bed lay a young girl. She had been cursed by the witch after stealing some bread from the market. Again, spelling errors in this are horrible. And some lettuce from the witch's private stock. 
Then, accidentally, she had set fire to an important spell. So the witch had said she would sleep until one of her relatives discovered the curse and found the place to set her free. Maria took a stopper with trembling fingers and poured it into Thalia's lips. The girl did not respond. Suddenly, though, her eyes opened. She was 12, no older than the day she was cursed. Maria and daughter embraced, and Maria smiled. It has been worth the journey to see her daughter. Again, goddamn, spell words right. She was middle-aged, but too old. For 10 miles travel in one day, she was exhausted. Goodbye, my child, Maria said. Those silent tears and help are through silent heal, te- through silent tears and helped Thalia up. Mummy, whispered Thalia. Maria nodded and sunk to the floor. Goodbye, she whispered again and died. Thalia began to cry and the witch came in. She made a great journey, the witch said grimly and placed a finger on Maria's lips. Colors shined in her face. Uh, Where was I? I, Oh, again, as Maria began to cough. Life, said the witch. Quietly (laughs) and disappeared suddenly. On the floor lay a pile of robes. On top, a piece of paper. Maria opened it and read with a trembling voice to Thalia. It read, Dear Maria and Thalia, you have passed my test and prove yourselves worthy. You are witches of the highest kind, the ones who are noble and truthful. You must return to this place once a year and light the red candles, and then you will discover the truth each time. Your first truth lies here. On the back of this note, turn the note over. This witch is very explicit. Maria turned the paper and both women's faces filled with wonder. For on the back it said in curled writing, have hope, have children, have the noble king and rise once more. Find the great cavern, wake him and he shall lie there, grow dusty. Find him, the children. Find him when he next he is needed and called. I feel whoever was writing this got drunk towards the end of this. He shall sleep. Find him or forever bear the burden. For you are Queen Yalishkishkishkis. Messenger. Messengers to the Queen of the Witches. That is truth. Awaken great king. Known as King Liar. King of the Centaurs. King of the Elves. King of Men. Now go to bed, my children. Because that story is over. Good night. So JC's apparently sleeping at this point. Um, oh yeah, I can go to sleep anywhere. Oh dude. no, no, you're awake. I was. I can go to sleep anywhere, anytime, any place. Oh, that's okay. I was just going to explain to the audience that uh, I was just going to get up and leave and let the recording go until you decided to wake up and turn it off, and they could listen to you sleep for the next four hours. Yeah. Sound like a plan? That's a plan to me. All right. 